What's going on guys, Connor here. We have a really cool video today. It's gonna to be over a penny stock. The particular ticker we're talking about is FLDM. Had a really good move up and then it came crashing down. A lot of people made some good money on this. We wanna talk about this stock specifically because it was an easy to borrow penny stock. I'm gonna show you a bunch of trades we took on the stock. We ended up making about $3,500 on it today. All the trades were pretty good. We had a couple mishaps in there, but I would love to explain those to you guys and then show you some really significant levels that this interacted with today in order to create the move that you've seen. So let's get into sharing the screen here. So what I wanna show you guys is this particular stock, how it traded today. The first thing I wanna do is just pretty much map off all the areas I ended up trading on before I put the trades on, cause it's gonna get crazy. So he traded it here, traded it, um, I think up here, traded here, traded there, and I think I traded in here, and then I took one more trade around here and realized we were done going down for the time being. So you're pretty much gonna be able to see a long move turned into a short move. So I pretty much traded the up, and then traded the down, and then I left for the day. I didn't catch this squeeze, but if I had, I would have been shorting this top again. So we're gonna walk through the whole thing, it's really cool. Before we put on the trades, I'm gonna show you guys sort of how I go about trading a couple things. So with my strategy, not my strategy only, millions of trader strategies, looking at this chart, pretty much when I looked at FLDM today and seen that it was trading above this red line, to me, I already, it, look at this as a euphoric market, okay? Euphoric or overvalued, overvalued, too high. However you wanna classify, I call that as a euphoric, too high market to be buying into when it's over this red level on my one year, one day chart. Now I wanna show you two things. First, we're gonna draw a horizontal resistance slash support line over top of this red line, boom. Then I'm gonna to go to the four hour chart and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a red line right over top that green line, okay? Now we're gonna to go to the intraday chart and you're gonna see how uniquely these levels play out. So now we go to the one minute chart. You see down here on our first line, we drew the, the first red line. Look at where the stock breaks out. Is it coincidence? I don't think so. All right, now let's go up to the next green, or sorry, next red line we drew, right where the stock breaks out. Coincidence? Probably not. All right, remember how we said on the yearly chart that if in the event the stock is trading over the red level, we see that as a euphoric market, too high, shouldn't be buying? Well, let's go look at the one minute chart intraday. Where was it trading when it was up here? Over the, the top level. It's not red right now because it's uptrending. You can see that on the yearly chart, this one was downtrending, hence the color difference. So looking at FLDM from a one year, one day chart, we'd say the market was a little euphoric at that time, a little overvalued, maybe not the best time to be getting in. We go to the one minute chart, FLDM trading all the way up at 863, $9.26 all the way over the green. A little bit of a euphoric market, probably not the best time to buy. So same concept, different time frame. Now what I want to do is put on all the trades. I did trade this a lot. You know, if you guys aren't used to, you know, seeing the way I trade, I trade all sorts of different ways. Sometimes I hold trades longer. Sometimes I'll do scalping. Depends on basically how I'm feeling for the day. All right. But it all revolves around the same concept and strategy. Before we get into putting the trades on the chart, sorry, didn't leave you on a cliffhanger there. The next most important thing you guys have to understand is this is what we call an easy to borrow penny stock, okay? I have a video on this. I will leave a couple videos in the description of this video. You must watch those or else you may never even know what the hell I'm talking about here. And it could be a very big key factor to you turning as a profitable trade in the penny stock markets. So I'll leave those in the description below. Make sure to watch them, thumbs up the video, thumbs up this one, and we'll see you on the next stream we have. So this is an easy to borrow penny stock. Basically what this means for us, the way we think about this is it's gonna go up, okay? That's what we think, pretty much, okay? That's all you gotta know. So when I first looked at this stock on the day, I knew that it was easy to borrow, which tells me there's a good chance it's going to squeeze higher. 
So I'm gonna show you one of the ways that I might try to identify if the stock is gonna go higher, and that's actually by me trying to make it go down. And if I can't sort of feel the pressure going down when I'm selling or how I'm getting bought into, then I might be on to, this is gonna go higher. So I'm gonna put on all these trades, we'll walk through them. I had like one situation where I got faked out a little bit and then I was like, you idiot. So you'll see I actually start my first trade here on the stock with 50 shares short at what I believe to be like this small resistance. I'm like, okay, well, it's kind of jump. Let's just kind of see how it feels. So you can see I start really small, 50 shares. So I end up making like, I don't know, like 10 bucks or something. I'm like, okay, it works. And then it pops up again and we have like a slight, uh, slight divergence here. Okay, you can see like the, the, the price action on the stock goes a little higher we have lowering momentum. I'm like, meh, let's take another short. So you can see I go short 600 shares, cover 300, cover another 300, another like 100 and maybe like $20 win that time or something, okay? And so at that point, you can see I went 50 shares real small just to test the waters. And then I'm like, okay, we get the divergence, a little bit more bearish signal. I go heavier on the size. And you can see I, I cover some to lock profit and then I hold 300 shares. And as I'm holding the 300 shares, you can see volume kind of thins out and the stock just starts to hold. So I take off the 300 shares knowing that it's probably going to move a little bit higher, all right? And this is all me kind of testing the waters. Why? Because it's an easy to borrow penny stock. So that means I can actually short it on this platform. If this were a stock that was hard to borrow, I would not be able to participate on the short side. So by being able to participate on the short side, I can now actually sell the stock down and short it, trying to make profit on the downside. Well, if it doesn't go down and you're short, it's gonna have to go up and then you have to exit taking shares off higher, creating a move higher. So I'm participating short right now, okay, in the day. Shrink this down. So I'm participating short, cover 300 shares here, all right? Why did Connor go short on this red line? Because the red line was resistance. First time to it, it's resistance. If the market wants to go over, it's going to tell you. So, based on the strategy that I follow, Connor was willing to take a short trade on what he believes to be resistance and a potential breakout level. Because that price point was our four our one hot well let me rephrase that it was the 180 day four hour trend line significant point if we hold below drop out if we break over bust out that's the concept there for me so one way i will know and start to get an idea is let's go short on what we believe is resistance when it first gets there when it first has its attempt, first attempt, that's when you're gonna have the greatest success of not like getting faked out or some weird stuff happening, believe me. So you can see, I go short now, 900 shares. So you can slowly see I'm getting higher and higher as I'm getting a little bit more confident after I played the stock for a sec. So now I go short 900 shares at 737. It drops out to 731, I cover 500 shares because I can feel that it's not going to break down, right? So then I end up covering all of those shares short, and guess what? I go long 5,000 shares. Because what I did was participate in the market bearish, and I could feel the pressure to the upside, which then allowed me to quickly say, this stock will probably squeeze. And we're right at my four hour trend line. This is a significant point. So you see I go heavy. 5,000 shares, and there's a reason why. I knew we're right at the breakout level. By me doing a 5,000 share order, I'm gonna put a lot of money into the market there, and I myself might be able to kind of force that move a little bit, and to get everybody else to go, oh, it's going, and then so I'm trying to actually kind of kickstart the move right there, so that's why I took a 5,000 share position. So I'm inevitably trying to help the market break out in a sense. So I go long 5,000 shares here at 740 just before the actual break, okay? And you can see I, I quickly take shares off. So we go for the breakout, it's a big position. I know I'm buying high, so if somehow it's not a true breakout, you could get dumped on. So I make sure to deleverage quickly so that I'm holding a position that if in the event I'm actually wrong, it's not gonna crush me. So I go long 5,000 shares at 740, right? We go long 5,000 shares at 740. That seems off. 
I sell some fourth. I sell 4,500 shares at 752. I sell 200 shares at 772. I sell 200 more shares at 781. You will see that I close my last 100 shares as we approach the green line. Because like I said, if it's at the green line or over, to me, that's a euphoric mark and I shouldn't be buying, but it's also a great time to take advantage of selling. So you'll see I close my last 100 shares there, okay? Then I actually get faked out, okay? So you will see that I actually go short 2,500 shares on this candle. It turned red and I was like, this is gonna be the one. So I started big there and then it actually popped up again and then I, I would took it off and I'm like, you're an idiot. It's gonna come right back down. So you'll actually see, then I end up going in uh, even heavier. I go on like 3,500 shares here. Anyway, so let's zoom out so we can see this a little better, all right? So you end up seeing, I start going short here again, like 3,000, 4,000 shares right on the top here at 904 and I cover some at 879 I cover 2000 shares I cover 1300 shares at 873 okay so then I'm holding a little bit we go short again on this peak on that top so we come down let me draw and stop mumbling and, and being gibberish so we go short on the top here 3500 shares we come down tap the green level which is the first sign of support on the way back down I'll cover a little bit re go short on the uptick here cover some into this trend down. I go short more on the top of this candle, cover some on the bottom, go short here, fade the trend back down. Uh, we go short some more here, take some more off, and then that's the one where I actually finally lost like 200 bucks. So if we zoom out a little bit and kind of walk you through this again and take this off, so now there's no trades. And also let me show you the, yeah, you guys are like, oh, look at all these trades. So the p and is over here, 3,400 bucks. So. I mean, with how much the stock moved, I mean, if I traded it and held, yeah, you can make way more money, but just inevitably, we made 3,400 bucks, and this is everything that I did here today. So now let's take the trades off and just kind of walk you through the psychology here, right? So Connor sees that the stock is easy to borrow, which means for once, I can actually short this on Thinkorswim, which means everybody else can for the first time. So the market probably is gonna go opposite of what you think you can do now, right? That's the concept. So it's easy to borrow, which means, so the way I see this is easy to borrow means a bunch of sheep. <laughs> We're all sheep at times, so I'll include myself in the sheep. So a bunch of sheep will go short and those sheep are unknowing of what the market's gonna do on the ETB stock and then it's gonna use them to blow the price up, okay? So anyways, right? go long on this break, cover the long as we get into the euphoric market, enter the short as we enter the euphoric market, and cover the short as we return back to trend in the market. Because the white line, if you look at the white line, that's the trend for the market, okay? At the time, this white line was actually like up here too or closer, all right? So that being said, we went from a oversold market on the downside to an overbought market on the upside back to a normal trending valued fair market okay overbought ob os oversold fv fair value on the day that ladies and gentlemen was what happened today with the stock fldm those were the trades, 3,400, not bad. I hope you guys like this video. Make sure that the next time you start to trade, you check off your, these are probably the, the four most important things that you can do when you're trading a penny stock like this. Ask yourself, is it low in cycle? Is it overbought? Is it breaking any near-term resistance? And then make sure, make sure, make sure to smash the like button or else your trading will probably never turn profitable. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, everybody take care. Have a great day. I'll see you guys on the next one.